So we're going to do a very short section here, like no more than 15 minutes, on using the service worker to actually cache an existing site. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And then guess what? You get another lab where you get to take an existing site and convert it offline. And it's a lot better than listening to a lot of lecture after lunch because I know how to put you to sleep. It's not what you want. So, okay, so what we're going to do is in two phases, we're going to store the files in the service worker install event and then retrieve them when a fetch happens. Now, I want to make a point here. There is still a browser cache. So there's the cache API that you're using, but there's still a browser cache. It, the browser cache will still have files, it'll still serve them, it'll still pass them through. So it's possible, just like with regular browser cache, to get files that are stale because they're stuck in here. So some of the files I'm going to suggest that you set to zero lifetime in the browser cache so that they always get through to the service worker. So basic registration, I showed you this before, right? If it exists, register it with a control file. You don't need this function registration, but you should wait and at least register that it came up or show the error. But the registration after that, you don't really care about it right now. So for storage, start by building a list of files. Give the cache a name. This could be, by the way, a let or a const. We're using var here just because not everybody's familiar with uh, ES6. And then list out the URLs you want. Now, notice I have index.html and a dot. Any guess why I have that? Because they both refer to the same thing. Any good guesses? So remember, there's two ways to get to index.html. Slash, which means current directory or dot, and index.html. If you don't cache both of those, then one of those accesses the user will use like slash, and they'll get a not found because that doesn't match the cache request. So you're actually going to wind up grabbing the same file twice, but this will come over the network once go into the browser cache, and then it'll be picked up a second time from the browser cache. So it, it only costs you one network access. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and cache our main CSS file. This is the minimum set, basically, to get that page working. So we do the install, event wait until. Remember, that's to keep the service worker from going to sleep. Open the cache, which returns a promise. When that's open, you'll get the cache object, and you just say to the object, OK, add all those URLs. And it goes out, grabs everything, everything from the network, and stores it. Really simple. Now to retrieve, install a fetch handler inside the service worker. Respond with, if the cache, cache has this event, then return the response back. Now, fetch is interesting because it won't return until fetch resolves out. Um, in this case, we can also we return the response, or we can recursively fetch. Well, it's not recursive. This will fall straight to the network outside to make the request if it's not in the cache already. This does not trigger recursive. There's no reentrance here. So you can examine it in the, examine it in the developer tools. And anything different here? Nope, you've seen this particular picture. So here's your lab. Use Service Worker to make an app work offline. You'll cache the resources and use them instead of the network. It's just that easy. We're, it's scheduled for half an hour. It'll probably take you 15 minutes. I'm going to check in with you in 15. OK, let's go ahead and start.